Now, when it comes to your business website, making it easy for existing or potential clients or customers to contact you is incredibly beneficial. And that's one of the main reasons why you see the chat option on so many websites. With that in mind, we're going to take a look at one option that makes it easy to add to your site and start nurturing those client relationships. Hi, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so today we're taking a look at Tidio, who have kindly sponsored this video. Now, Tidio is an online chat service that makes integrating with your website quick and painless while offering both live chat and advanced chat automation. Now, best of all, you can start off with a free plan, and if you need the advanced options, you can upgrade at any time. Now, first, why do you need an online chat tool on your website? Well, easy. You want to make it as easy as possible for potential customers to reach out with questions. Secondly, you can use online chat to increase your sales, recover abandoned carts, and so much more. Now, today, we'll take an overview look at what Tidio offers so you can see if this is the perfect option for your website. Now, once you've signed up to Tidio, you can log into your account, and there's a couple of ways that you can start interacting with your chatbot. Firstly, you need to install it onto your website, and we'll take a look at doing that on a WordPress website in a moment. Once you've done that, you also have the option then to download the app onto your phone so you can have access to all the chats as and when they come through via the phone app, or you can download and install the app as part of the actual software on your computer itself. Thirdly, you can also just keep the website running with the app open inside the website and you'll be notified whenever new chats come in or when there's an update to a chat that you currently have active. One of the other things you can do is you can have multiple users and you can assign different chats to different users. So this can scale with you as a business from an individual right the way up to cover pretty much all the needs you may have. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created an account. I'm just going to simply going to go into the app after I've logged in, and that'll give me access then to the online chat service where I can do a range of different things. So you can see if we take a look, it's a nice, simple, clean interface. Down the left-hand side, we've got a range of different options for things like chats that are currently going on in conversations, the dashboard, any automations and bots, which we'll take a look at a little later in this video, visitors, contacts, channels, analytics, and your settings. Now, once you've set up your account, inserted the URL for the actual website you want to use this on. And if it's a WordPress website, you can simply come in and download the plugin, put your relevant details in there, and you're then pretty much good to go. What you've presented with on the website is a little chat entry option in the bottom left or bottom right hand corner. Now, there are lots of ways that this chat option can be used on the site. You can leave it closed as it is at the moment, and then when the user that's on the site is interested in actually contacting you, they can click and open it up and they can start typing in their message. Or you can have it do various different things. So you may want to say that after 30 seconds that you'll then open it up and just welcome the visitor to your website, whatever kind of thing you want to do. That's a very basic example, but using the chat bots, you can get a lot more complicated with it, all done through a nice visual interface. And again, we will be taking a look at the chat bot options a little later in this video, but they are incredibly extensive, but also very, very easy to use. Now, if I'm a visitor on the website and I want to leave a message, it's very easy. Simply open this up and you can see it gives a nice welcome. It's color coded to the styling for the website, which is all controllable via the settings in the admin of your account. So you can style this to look exactly the way that you want with all the right messages to make sure you get great brand integration. So let's just say I have a question and I want to ask something. So I'll just pop something into here and we'll just hit enter. Now you can see any previous conversations that I've had will also be listed at this point. But if we just jump back over now to the application, we'll see that we have a new message. So I jump back over, you can see there's my new message. If I click on there, that'll open the conversation up and I can now see every interaction I've had with a particular person via this particular website. So it's very easy to see. Now if I kind of reply on there and I'll just say I'm good today. I'll hit reply on there and again you see we get notified if we go back to the website you can see there's our message coming straight up in there which is incredibly easy. Now if you're using the mobile app you'll also be notified via that so you can easily interact via the mobile 
to keep in touch with your clients even when you're away from the office. So if you are a one-man band and you want to make sure that you keep that interaction with anybody that visits your website, you can easily do that. You can also set up rules in there to make sure that you're only notified during particular office hours. So you may say that you don't want to be contacted between 6pm and 8am. Well, what you can do is you can set that rule up and then any contact that comes in will come into your account but you won't be notified via any of the methods you're currently using. Obviously, you can also set things up where you're dealing with multiple different users so you could have various different people in different offices that interact at different times of the day. You have a lot of flexibility with Tidio and it's incredibly easy to set up and integrate into your workflow. Now what else makes Tidio incredibly useful is the fact that it allows you to track your users. So if you want to see what pages they visited on the site you have your chat module, it's very easy to do. So we take a look on the right hand side, you can see these are all the pages on a particular date that these were viewed. So I can easily see where my users are going and if I want to, I can help point them in the right direction or I can prompt them to do various different things. For example, I could offer them a discount if I see they've been visiting a particular page on the site with a particular product. There's a lot of options available there. So that's just a really basic example. We have other things we can do as well. So if we head over to the visitor section, we can find out exactly who's looking at the website at any particular given point. Now the site that I'm using is just a demonstration site, so it's only me that's logged onto it. But you can see that if we had multiple visitors on there, we could find out where they're from, the browser they're using and so on. We can also automatically start a chat with them. So if we go onto there, we can have that live user interaction or we can use the bots. So we have a ton of flexibility to make sure that we can give the end user a great experience and we can contact them without the need for them to contact us first. So it's very easy to do, easy to integrate into your site and hopefully what you can see from this example, very easy to implement. Now speaking of implementation, how easy is it to go through and make sure this is styled and branded exactly the same as you want for your site? Well, incredibly easy. If we come over to the channel section, you can see this opens up all the options to control the way that the chat channels actually display. You can see we can come in and we can style things up. We can specify the position left or right. We can display, we can specify what types of devices you want to allow us to be displayed upon. We can choose any predefined colors or we can customize this with our own custom branded colors. We can come into the sidebar and you can see we can specify various different options on there, the position and so on. The integration, so you can see the chat code installed properly, so we can just make sure that everything is set up on there. So even if you're not using WordPress and you don't want to necessarily use the WordPress app or plugin, you can still integrate this into your site just by using a simple piece of JavaScript code, and then you can start using the chat in your site. So you're not limited to only using this on a WordPress site. You can use this on pretty much any website you want. If we take a look then at the Messenger, you can see we can connect this through to our Facebook account so we can use Tidio as part of a Facebook chat as well. So we can integrate this with Messenger, which is great if you use that as one of your contact methods. Also got the option then to manage mailboxes so we can link this through to mailboxes. And finally, we have the chat on site. So again, we can come in and we can fine tune various different aspects of this. So very easy to deal with. So speaking of the phone app, is it actually any good? What kind of tools and facilities does it give us? Well, as you can see from the screen at the moment, we've got a nice, simple, clean interface. We can click and view any of the chats, and you can see that gives me exactly the same chat as we have on screen on the app, and also what the user is going to see. So we can trace that entire conversation. We can do things like edit the visitor details, reassign to an alternative operator. We can leave the conversation, or if we've got someone that's abusive or we don't want to deal with, we can also ban that particular visitor. We can also just directly interact with the user and as you can see we can simply go in start typing our message in and then everywhere that's actually associated we'll see that the information will pop up on all the different screens so we'll see it on the app we'll see it on the phone app we'll also see it on the screen that the user will see so it's very easy to deal with jump back out of the conversation and you can see if we open up the little hamburger menu in the corner we have a couple of different options if we had various different projects we could switch between any of those projects we could turn us offline so we could go offline and stop having interactions via the phone app. We've then got the option for visitors, which is the same as what you saw on the actual app on screen on the website. It allows us to see who's visiting the site and we can then go through and interact with them. So you can see at the moment, I've only got the same conversation, which is with myself, but you can see it's very easy to do. If we jump back out of there, we can come into the channels and as you can see, we've got the same options as we had before, messenger, live chat, email, and chat on site. 
come back out of there, you can see we've got the settings option and we can go through, we can configure various different things, our profile, our account information, what types of notifications we want and the operators that are actually associated with our particular account who we can assign things to. So it's a very simple app, but it has all the tools that we need to keep in touch via the Tidio chat on our website. So now that we've taken a look at the key fundamentals of working with Tidio Chat, let's take a look at the automation and the bots. Now, this might seem quite a daunting task to start off with, but you have both a range of predefined bots that we can use and we can create our own or customize any of the bots. Now, everything is done through a visual representation of the process. So let's just take a look at that flowchart in action. Let's just start off with a really simple option. Let's say something like generate more sales. If we expand that out, you can see you've got lead generation, order a phone call bot, or place an order. If we expand it to the enhanced communication, you can see we've got things like welcome new visitor, visitor leaves form, and so on and so forth. If we take a look at other bots, you can see we've got discount for returning visitors and things like that. So what this will sort of demonstrate is that you can have various different interactions based upon what the user does. So let's start off with a really simple one. Let's go to generate more sales. And let's just say we're gonna use a lead generation bot. And click on that, come over to the right hand side and say add. Once we do that, it says your automation is now being saved. We can then review it and make any changes we want to it. So it says we've automatically now created our automation. We'll click OK. That'll take us over now to the flow chart that will show us exactly what's going to happen as default. And obviously, like I say, we can, if we want to, edit this to do whatever we want. So before we take a look at what this actual flow chart does, let's test it out and see how this actually works on a site. We'll simply click on the test it out button and that'll open up a preview window which we can use to test this particular chatbot out. So as you can see, after a certain period of time, something happens with our chatbot. It says, hello, would you like to take a closer look at our offer? We have two options available, yes and no. So if we move this over, you can see there's the flow chart. So the first visit to the site, there's the decision. This is what pops up. Would you like to take a look at this? Then we have a set of actions. So in other words, if we click on yes, please, one set of actions will trigger. If we say no, thanks, a different set of actions will trigger. And then finally, an operator will be notified. So let's take a look. If we say yes, please, what will happen is that will pop up. It'll show us that something's being typed in. It says, great. In that case, could you provide us with some additional details? In this case, the email and the phone number. And then what we can do is we can choose whichever one actually applies to us. Let's close that down. Let's open that test up again and we'll take a look at if we choose the other option. So this time, let's just choose no thanks. So we'll click on that. You can see the chat box opens up again. We get a little chat message pop up. It says, okay, there's a different reaction this time. It says, all right, if you need anything, just let us know. So depending upon which option you choose, a different set of actions will happen. So you can see when we come down to this flow chart, it says, basically, there's the question that pops up. First of all, do you want to choose A or B? If you choose A, it'll go around to this particular section. If you choose B, it'll go to this particular section. And then at the end of it, it'll come down and just say a chat message and then come out and say it'll know notify the operators. So it's very, very simplistic in the way it works, but you can set this up to be as complex as you need it to be, or alternatively, as simple as you need it to be. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at how we can create a very, very simple option ourselves using the bot options. So for this simple example, we're gonna come down and say, create your own bot or automation. So we're gonna click, we say, create a new one from scratch, and we'll click on add. Now, obviously you can create it from scratch or you could take one of the predefined sort of bots that have been set up and then you can edit that to get exactly what you want. Just wanna show you how easy this whole process is. So the first thing we need to do is choose a trigger. So you can see we've got various different triggers we can do. So you say first visit on site, mouse leaves window, etc., etc., etc. We're gonna do something really simple with this. We're gonna say this is gonna be on a certain day. So we're gonna just select that. So our trigger is on a certain day. So we're gonna to say today is Wednesday. We're gonna say on a Wednesday, this is gonna be triggered. Now you can then set how you want this to be triggered and how many times. So you can see we've got multiple times, once every 24 hours and so on. I say multiple times because I'm just testing this out. Okay, so we've set the trigger up. Now it says on certain days, i.e. Wednesday, do something. Well, we're gonna say, the first thing we want to do is just delay for a certain period of time. So we're gonna set this to 10 seconds, but we can set this to minutes if we want to, hours and days. Once we've done that, you can see we now get a little flow arrow from the first event, the trigger, down to the delay. So we can say we're happy with that. After that delay, on that day, what do we want it to do? Well, you can see we've got various different things we can do. We're gonna keep this, again, really simple. We're just gonna say, send a chat message. 
So we're going to drag that down, drop that underneath. You can see it says, what message do you actually want to pop up on there? So you can say, type in a message, say, can I help you? So there we go, there's our message. If we wanted to, we can do some other things on there, but we're going to keep this pretty simple. And once we've done that, if we close that down, you can see at the moment, the delay and the actual send a chat message are not linked to each other. So currently, nothing will really happen. So all we need to do is grab this little dot at the bottom, we're going to drag that down and you can see as we drag it towards that actual action, we get the little arrow and we can now drag that down a little bit. So now we've got a very simple flow. It says on a Wednesday, delay for 10 seconds, then send a chat message and a particular message. Now, like I say, this is a really simple example, but you can get incredibly in depth in how you want this to work. So let's just test this out and see it in action. We we'll just click on test this out and we can take a look in our little pop up window. So there's our test window and you can see our pop up in the bottom corner. We'll wait for a certain period of time and we should have a little message pop up. And there we go. There's our message. We can now start interacting with that user or they can start interacting with us. But all done through this very simple automation. But like I say, you can get a lot more in depth with it should you need to. And that's just the basis of the automation and the bots inside Tidio. So there are basically a ton of really great pre-built automations and bots already set up for you. But if you find that you don't have one that meets the criteria you want, you can see that it's very easy to start creating your own. So if the whole thought of integrating and creating these bots is something that leaves you cold, don't worry because they've already created a great PDF with a ton of various different options in there that'll show you step by step how to create them. Each trigger, each step, each decision. So you can go through those and you can create something a little bit more unique. Also, if you remember at the top of the video, I said that this can help you with abandoned shopping carts. Well, if you take a look at page 25 and 26, you can see there's a step-by-step -step guide to showing you how you can create an abandoned cart lead generation bot all inside Tidio. Now, I have literally just scratched the surface of what you can achieve with Tidio by adding this to your site and using either the automations that are built in or by creating your own automations and bots all inside the software itself. So what I'd recommend is if this is something that interests you, take a look at the website. You can go over and take a look at the pricing options. So if you find that the basic plan isn't enough for you, you can go through and you can take a look at the additional plans and you can see they start as little as 15 euros per month for up to three operators. So go take a look at that. The link is in the description below. Check it out. If you think it's something useful, take a look at actually integrating this into your site, whether the free version or one of the paid for plans. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it's given you an idea onto how you could use Tidio in your website. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But let me know in the comment section below why you didn't enjoy the video. It helps me create better content for you. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below. And until next time, take care.